But uh, yes, there is a lot to get into here today because CM Punk is back in WWE. Happened on Saturday night at Survivor Series. A very interesting uh, show, really, the way that they they did all of this. And we could talk about it a lot here. We talked about it a lot on... uh, on Saturday's Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave Meltzer, last night's Brian and Vinny and Craig show. But we'll give you all of the results of the Survivor Series, tell you what they did throughout the show to uh, really, when they when they shot the angle, my first thought was it was complete incompetence. But it turned out it was not incompetence at all. It was very, very clever. And I probably should have known a lot earlier that he was showing up, but I had no idea. And uh, I was fixing to leave when that music hit. So, a uh, lot to get into here today. And he will be on Raw tonight, the first hour of which is commercial free. Back in a moment to kick it off, Observer Live. So, uh, just to get this news out of the way, Tammy Sitch was involved in a fatal car crash, killed a 75 year old man March 25, 2022. She, uh,. Was transported to the hospital, unknown injury, sample of blood was taken, arrested on DUI, manslaughter-related charges. Toxicology reports found her blood alcohol content 3.5 times the legal limit during the fatal car crash. She posted a $227,000 bond, but a judge deemed her to be a danger to the community, revoked the bond. She was returned to jail. August 16th, she ple- uh, pled no guilty. And uh, moments ago, she was sentenced to 17 years in prison and uh, another, I believe, eight years probation. Yes, eight years probation. So uh, if you went through the list of the last decade, five times in four weeks in 2012, three times in 2015, driving under the influence, on probation, two DUIs in 2018... Uh, fugitive from justice charges, six counts of contempt of court, uh, bench warrant, another arrest, another DUI, 2019. Uh, so anyway, uh, that situation is uh, wrapped up as of moments ago. 13 DUI incidents, including the death. DJ wow. notes here. So uh, that's how this wrapped up. I believe she could have gotten 25 years. But they gave her 17. So, and then, of course, the probation afterwards. Well, we got to talk about CM Punk. He's back. He is back. This from WrestlingObserver.com. After nearly a decade. Nearly a decade, damn it. If it had only been a few more months, I don't want all those bets. Anyway, yet? 45-year-old made a surprise appearance at the end of Survivor Series in his hometown of Chicago. Our own Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez detailed all the... You? Yeah, that's what it says here. Discussed oh. all the details on Observer Radio. Yeah. Dave says deal came about 10 days ago. Punk signed a multi-year agreement. TKO executives kept in the dark regarding his return. It was Nick Khan and Paul Levesque that made this deal. Vince McMahon had nothing to do with it. And uh, Triple H at the press conference. I hope the owner of the Atlanta Hawks and some of the other people on the board are like, oh, come on. You know, you know Triple H, uh, he posted something something like uh, hell is frozen over, something like that. Yes. And, mighty, uh, mighty cold day, warm day in hell or cold. Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I wrote a column for Sports Illustrated. You know I write for Sports Illustrated? That's I've right. That. Got a column up there. It's on my X right now at Brian Alvarez. If you want to check that out, my Twitter, the free, the free X. To be part, honest, by the way. yes. But uh, I have in there, you know, all of the quotes that uh, CM Punk said about Triple H, and I explained why I had made so many bets that this guy wasn't coming back. And honestly, like of all of my arguments about why this guy was not going to be coming back, it had nothing to do with, you know, what happened the first time or. You know, the fact that uh, he said it would be a personal failing if he ever went back or anything like that. I presumed he would never come back because of all of the things that he said about Triple H when he was leaving and how he never got along with Triple H. And he basically told him, you know, I don't need a match with you at WrestleMania. 
you need a match with me. And man, I followed Triple H his whole career. And some some bloke telling him, I don't need a match with you. You need a match with me. I was like, this dude ain't ever coming back. And then it turns out that Triple H is in charge of creative. So then when everything went down with AEW, it was like, man, what timing, brother? Triple H in charge of creative. I mean, that is like it's not going to happen. Well, Paul Levesque said that it, things have changed. He's a different person. Punk is a different person. It's a different company. And I guess, hey, a lot of people say a lot of things, but he brought the guy back. So there you go. And, uh, you know, as I concluded in the uh, column that I wrote for Sports Illustrated, which is up right now on my X, you know, at the end of the day, the question is, how long does this honeymoon period last? And is CM Punk going to be a team player? Because he was clearly not a team player, as it turns out, in AEW. Everything went very badly. And, you know, when he when he left, everybody was like, I shouldn't say everybody, but, you know, the pro-punk people were like, well, you know, he just didn't respect anybody there. Things will be different in WWE. And it's like, do you guys not remember he was in WWE for years? And that also went poorly? Now, I do believe, I do believe that uh, the guy's got to know that your, your, your career, it is all in the hands of Triple H. That's it. He has to know that. And if he's cool with that, then everything could work out great. And uh, and if not, then things are going to go south again like they did before in WWE and also in AEW. So that's the big question here. Short term, listen, is same thing in AEW. Everything's going to be great in the short term. You know, they're going to do a big number tonight, especially because the uh, show, the first hour is commercial free, my most hated thing. But they're going to do a big number tonight, you know, per football season standards. And I'm sure, you know, the first time he starts going all these towns are going to do well. But, uh, you know, the question is long term. And I know people will get mad at me, but the fact of the matter is Raw is not sold out right now. And uh, he came back on Saturday. They announced he'd be there on Monday. And since his return at Survivor Series, they've sold about 1,000 additional tickets. But they're still 500 away from what has been set up. They could still open another 4,000 seats or so if they were, like, selling tickets like crazy. But right now, they're at 1,000 tickets that he's sold. And there's still 500 left to a sellout for what the original setup was. So this is not like, you know, when he came in for uh, AEW in Chicago and sold that thing out like that. Uh, that's not what this is. So a lot of questions to be answered. And uh, the first questions will start to be answered. If I may say one more thing, Mike. Take it. You know, one of the things that we got that we don't have an answer for, which I don't have an answer for, and I'd like to know an answer to this, is... Do you remember when they started doing all of those teases? And like Corey Graves would throw out some line that CM Punk did in a Ring of Honor promo 17 years ago or something? Nakamura's GTS? Yeah, Nakamura that one week did a GTS on the stage, and then the next week he did a GTS in the ring. And then it just stopped. It stopped, okay? And, you know, Hunter did say, like, we didn't tell, like, nobody knew. It was, it was me and Nick Khan. And I would presume that, and I can tell you for the most part, for the most part, that's absolutely true. Because I know there were big names in WWE that knew nothing about this. And they did tell everybody before they went through the curtain for the war games. Like, everybody in the ring during war games knew that Punk was going to come out at the end. But, like, before that, I can't say everybody, obviously. But most people knew nothing. And so my question is... Did they tell Nakamura that this was possible like a month ago and he started doing that GTS? Or did they just like randomly tell him, hey, you know, why don't you do a GTS for a couple weeks here? What did they tell Corey Graves? Like, did those guys know 
or like what happened? Because Hunter did say this deal came about very late after it looked like it wasn't going to happen. So I'm wondering if maybe they were close a month ago, and that's when Corey was told to say stuff, and Nakamura was told to like do the GTS. And then if you recall, he only did the GTS for two weeks, and he never did it again. And he did do those mystery promos where he was like, you know, he wanted to face somebody. Maybe that's Punk. Maybe it's not. I mean, we don't know. It could have been Randy Orton. It could be anybody. It could be Otis, for all I know. So I don't have the answer to those questions, but I can tell everybody, like, for sure, very, very big names in WWE, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people had no idea this was going to happen as we were heading into Survivor Series.